Before starting to work on detailed environmental engineering principles, it is important to have a refresher on basic process engineering fundamentals. Environmental engineering units can be measured in very small numbers, for example, parts per million or parts per billion, or in very large units, such as gigawatts. Liquids are expressed in terms of mass, while gases are given in volumetric terms. Often you will be given non-metric values, and it is important to be able to convert any of these units from one to another. Two important principles in process engineering are the conservation of mass and the conservation of energy laws. These laws are again going to be important in environmental engineering in such things as contamination, flow, heat calculations, and more. In the mass balance calculation, the change in mass divided by the change in time within the system boundary is equal to the sum of any mass flows going into and out of that system. If we have a steady state system, this will simply reduce down to the mass in is equal to the mass out. For a batch system with non-conservative pollutants, such as bacteria in a closed tank, it can be shown that the mass balance reduces to the change in concentration over time being equal to the reaction rates. We can also model flow in a river as a plug flow reactor and show that the change in the number of moles over the change in volume is equal to the reaction rate. Each of these reaction rates will depend on the order of reaction of the reacting species. It is also possible to look at a step change function such as a pollutant added to a river and model the final output. To understand the energy balance, we need to remember that the broad term energy has three components. Heat, the transfer between objects of different temperatures. Energy, the ability to do work. And work, which relates to when an object moves. The broad energy balance is defined as the change of internal energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy over the change in time within the defined system boundary being equal to the summation of enthalpy, kinetic energy, and potential energy of the streams entering or leaving, plus any heat or work entering or leaving the system. In a thermal system, this is more commonly simplified to du dt is equal to the sum of hi for i is equal to 1 to n plus q plus w. In fluid flow systems with a single input, single output, the original balance can be simplified to a mechanical energy balance with flow, height differences, pumping, and friction terms to calculate the velocity in a pipe. Of similar importance in process engineering, we would look at three heat transfer calculations. The first is derived from Fourier's law for conduction. The result states that heat flow is equal to the negative thermal conductivity multiplied by the area perpendicular to heat flow times the difference in temperature divided by the length through which heat flows. The second law is Newton's law of cooling, which relates to convection. This states that the heat loss is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area perpendicular to heat flow times the difference in temperature of the surface and the bulk fluid. Lastly, radiation relates heat flux to the cross-sectional area, the Stefan-Boltzmann constant, and temperature to the power of 4.